Okay, I'm going to call the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control to order. Are there any agenda changes or additions? Thank you. So we have minutes from April 13th, 2023. Any discussion about the minutes? Do I have a motion? I would so move. So I have a motion to accept the minutes from April 13th. I'll second. We got a second by Travis. Any discussion? Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes of April 13th? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Are you taking the minutes? Okay. Liquor license applications? None. There are none. Tobacco license applications? None. There are none. Special event permit applications. There are three. <coughs> All of them are for 1013 LLC, which is moved. You've already approved all three events at the Oxbow. This is the follow-up to actually approve uh, the liquor license at the events that you um, approved the Oxbow usage at. Okay, so you need a motion to approve those three events? which is hosted by Moogs, you said. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the three events hosted by uh, Moogs. Okay, we have a motion by Laura. I'll second it. A second by Chris. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well, Judy. <coughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I have a motion by Chris. I'll second. A second by Travis. All those in favor of adjourning the uh, Liquor and Tobacco Control Board meeting. Say aye. 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 And that would be unanimous as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. So it's uh, 557. So I'm going to call the select board meeting to order. 533. 533. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll call the select board meeting to order, the regular select board meeting. Thank you. Do we have any agenda changes or additions? You do. Uh, I have two items to add, please. One is communication with the select board. That'll be no under new business, number one? Yes. And uh, under, well, I'll let you place this. It could be under old business. Uh, discuss the special meeting in reference to the hiring committee. I was thinking I'd put it right after number three. Okay. Okay. So we have minutes from May 1st to approve. Do I have a motion? I would so move. I have a motion by Chris to approve the minutes from May 1st. I will second. Second by Laura. Any discussion of the May 1st minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from May 1st? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Approve the minutes from May 8th. Do I have a motion? Move so move. Motion by Chris. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Laura. Any discussion on the May 8th minutes? Okay, hearing none, um, all those in favor of approving the minutes of May 8th? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. So new bi new business, communication with the board. Uh, I would just like to make a short statement. I'm not looking to get into dialogue, not looking to get into back and forth. Uh, I've spoken about this issue a couple of times, not as chair, but as a member of this board over the last four to five months, and it has to do with the, at times, uh, vitriol, at times, the, what I would call nasty discussion, and it has, it came to a head again this weekend through an email 
And I, I just want to say there's there's way too much at stake in this town right now. We have we have really important business to take care of, really important things to talk about, and we don't necessarily agree, but we can be civil and we can be respectful and get this done. As many of you know in this room, I've been a teacher for a long time. I've taught, I've taught in excess of 2,000 adolescents. And I have never, ever been spoken to or emailed the way we as a board were this past weekend. It needs to stop. It's unacceptable. We can't move forward. We can't get the business of this town done if that's happening behind the scenes. I'm human like the rest of you. I've got emotions. I think I've done a pretty good job keeping myself in check. I think I can do it again right now. But it's got to stop. And it's not up to me to stop it. I can't stop it. But we collectively can stop it. We can collectively do something about this. It was said not too long ago, it might have been the last select board meeting, that there's been too many apologies. And I agree. There's been too many apologies. We've got to stop thinking we can say things and then just say we're sorry afterwards. Just don't say it. It would be my advice. I know Chris has something to add to this. So this weekend, it kind of came, as, as Donna said, it came to a head. Um, and this is the email that we received. And it's in regard to the process that we're going through in selecting a new town administrator. And I quote, this is really getting to look bad. No discussion involving the public concerning the hiring process of the town administrator at Monday's meeting, meaning tonight. And you think we're going to just sit here and say, well, okay, I'm sure the board knows what they're doing. Why in God's name are you alienating us at this junction? I'm being, <clears throat> I'm, excuse me, I'm being so damn careful not to bring the public into this, but you folks sure are making it difficult for me. You want us to work with you, but you exclude us. I don't know how else to say this, but in all caps, get your shit together. So two things. Why are we having this conversation? And that's the best question. We want to shed light on the types of things that this board has been subjected to over the months. And I've only been on the board for a month now. Um, things have been shared with me email threads and other emails that have come both to myself and other members. And I think it's time that we stand back as a collective community and say, how do we want to move forward and how can we best do it? And together is the only way we're going to make any progress here. And this adds nothing to the conversation. In fact, it's deconstructive, not constructive. So what we're asking for tonight is for us all to agree that there's no place in the conversation for this nonsense. That we are all human. This board, uh, including uh, Judy that's not able to be here tonight, are volunteers trying to help make this community better and to move it forward. And we're simply asking to dial it down, be respectful, and move forward as a community, I think that we can do that. And we're just asking for your help. Thank you, Chris. I would not like to really debate this or open this up for conversation. I would rather just move on and get into some more positive discussion. We have some presentations coming up tonight. They're very positive presentations. Not to let me respond to that. I think you should. Go ahead, Mr. Cloutier. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. I, uh, I wrote an email to you today and told you that I respect everybody here and I like everybody here. 
and I respect what you're doing for the board, and I respect what you're doing as person. Let me explain to you why I wrote that email. I was sitting at my dining room table looking at the taxes that I had to pay today. I also looked at my bank account. While I was doing that, I saw that I wrote Chairman 3 episode. Well, the reporter said there was a, a few outliers. They were against the present budget. And I got a little upset at that. I also got upset when I looked back at my bank account and the taxes and realized that they're going to go up again next year. A little while later, I saw on the news that my Social Security check was probably not going to be coming in the mail. It's a good chance that might happen. I got upset again, right? So then I looked, I tried to calm down. I said, well, I see where the, the TA has, so let me finish. The TA has resigned, and the, the application date is the 19th of the month, two, two or three weeks from the, time, from the time that he resigned. And I'm thinking, this cannot be possible. That is not a, deep, a reasonable time to find a replacement for the TA. I'm getting a little bit burned. So I said, don't worry about it, Tom, because we'll talk about it at the select board meeting Monday. You know what happens? I look at the agenda, and it's not on the agenda. It's coming up. That not tonight, but it's coming up. It's coming up. So I guess. <clears throat> Yes, it's coming up. Give us a so, chance to explain what we're trying to do. Give uh, me an understanding when I'm sitting there at the table looking at the taxes, knowing that the state taxes are going up, knowing that people are making light of the thing like appraisals, which are going to affect our taxes, which are going to affect our income because the, the insurance of our houses are going to go up. So I am getting angry. Where it's coming up, we're going to discuss about the DA. So we're going to come up. And I'm supposed to be saying, sure, we'll sit here. And we're not going to have any talk about the budget either, are we? No, because it's not on the agenda. How do you expect us people that are sitting back here? sitting at our dining room tables, wondering how in the world are we going to pay this year's taxes, knowing next year's are going up also. And you think that we're just supposed to sit there and take all this. I said, yes, my tone in that, that tone in that letter was, as my wife said, inappropriate. But what I said was not in my title. And then talk that all off before I slip up. Tom, I'm going to ask you. I sent an email out to every, at every department head asking them, what in the world would you do? Is there consequences? Will there be consequences if no TA is here by July 1st? I had a very nasty letter from a select board member telling me how very, very inappropriate question that was. I don't see where that is inappropriate at all. I, paying that tax bill, pay their salaries. I have a right to ask that. I have an obligation because I care for this town to ask that question. And we care and for the town as well, Tom. Me and told me that was totally inappropriate. I said it was inappropriate. I didn't use profanity, and that there was that was the entire I sentence. So, I'm old school. but that I'm wasn't. I, but I'm not. That's that's where I'm sitting from. Yeah. You can sit here and say I shouldn't be doing that all I want, but I care about this town. Thank you, Tom. Okay, I'm going to move on to number two, and uh, we have a presentation from, go ahead, Tony.
Yeah, go ahead, Tony. Can you introduce yourself? I should have asked Tom. Tony, to Tony, Tony Hill, Morristown. And I just want you to know everybody can work together, but the chair that's not here tonight is one of the problems and it needs to be addressed. Can okay? I, Tony? Yeah. Wait, but, <coughs> there's, no, there's no room in any conversation to single out people and be critical. If you have, she singles me out, So first. if you have suggestions about how things can work differently, that's one thing. But to, to pointedly be critical of an individual and make it personal is exactly what we're talking about here. You can mean what you say, just don't mean, be mean when you say it. And, that, and the tenor needs to be different. Okay. When you and I have a dialogue, it's civil. And that's all we're asking. That's all we're asking to But I expect to be civil from Judy. Okay? Because I have not been treated so. Okay. And you guys got to do something about it. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to move on to number two. With that introduction, Allison, I, would you like to give the presentation in regards to the uh, Morristown Wellness? And this is, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, my name is Valerie Belfort, and I'm a nurse here um, in, with the Department of Health and my office is in Morrisville and I cover, um, I work with the Lamar County and Lamar Valley. So it's um, all of Lamar County and the Orleans South to provide you. Um, been in this position for 24 years and I was uh, born and raised in Morrisville. So I went to PA and graduated. I can't tell you when, but anyway. <laughs> um, so I've worked with the town of Morrisville for many years and um, in, in a wellness capacity. And Allison, Link and I, um, Allison is with Health in Moore Valley. And we have, and most recently have helped support the writing of the new wellness chapter, which is chapter 15 in the town plan. And because we recognize, and Morristown recognizes that uh, where you live, your zip code has, has as much to do with your health as your genetics. So. Um, we have a couple of handouts that um, I'll start here. So it's in addition to what you got in your packet. Thank you. Um, so, so, um, so essentially, what we're we're hoping to to discuss here is that within this in this chapter, um, it addresses what the objective is is to have a um, a wellness committee. Um, and that is to be determined as to what that should be, um, how it should be structured, can be uh, you know, input with a select board from the community. Uh, wellness committees are not anything new to Morristown. There have been uh, various iterations of wellness committees already on a volunteer basis. Um, in uh, 2010, 2009, 2010, for example, there was the uh, Moore Valley Fit and Healthy Council. And some of you may remember Kate Whitehead was uh, spearheaded that and um, did some various things, including walk audits that helped to uh, inform the town in terms of where to focus some energy on improving walkability and bikeability in the town. Um, also, part of this, there was a biking pedestrian committee that brought in local motion and another um, walkability, bikeability plan was created at that point. Um, and Alice and I have both been on a recreation committee prior to the pandemic um, that also looked at ways to enhance um, the, the many, many assets that most of us um, working with Trish and Pollard and, and many others. So, um, so what we're just proposing here is that we um, put together a, a, a very, very simple proposal um, to just um, begin the process of putting together a, a committee, however that should be. Um, we have lots of resources and other towns in Vermont that have done this and uh, to learn from them and to use uh, their structure. Um, the, the health department also has a framework that we use, we call it 3450. Um, while it focuses on chronic disease prevention, um, what this committee really, what we want to focus on is um, um, bolstering and amplifying the assets that we have. Um, so um, with that, I mean, basically what you have in your packet is, um, 
some information about what we have for assets in our community around parks and um, uh, walkability and um, one idea with the new committee is to, is to revisit a walk audit and to get community input about what is important to them and what help inform the town and where to make some improvements. Um, and obviously knowing this will be a process. Um, not wanting to add any more taxes to this process at all, um, but obviously work with the town. Um, and I think I want to give Allison some time here too. We have various toolkits, and I think that's what Allison really wants to talk maybe about some of that too. <laughs> Thanks, Val. Hi, everyone. Allison Thank you, Val. From Healthy Memorial Valley, um, we're a program at the Little Wild Family Center, and many of you may know it's our local parent child center. And so Healthy Memorial Valley is our substance prevention coalition looking at youth substance misuse prevention. And so when we think of health, I want maybe all of us can think about what does a healthy community look like for us, for all of us, each of us to live in and for the future generations here in Morristown. And what's our vision for that? And I think we all can look at what we have now and so many assets, but like what do we want it to be? And I think this can be part of setting those goals. And it's, as it says in chapter 13, um, you know, it's about setting goals for where we want to go with thinking about health and wellness. And it's so broad, you know, Val was not mentioning walkability and, and um, bikeability, and those are important things. Um, you know, but also, you know, working with Trish and the rec community, you know, we've been benches along the, on the rail trail or supported other ways that people can still be mobile and have a place to rest. It's, we're looking at all ages, we're looking at equity, um, and um, there's a lot of equity support and, um, and you know, with the Declaration of Inclusion and equity, you know, that's also a piece of health. We look at mental health. We look at mental health crises that we've been um, you know, dealing with through the pandemic and still currently. We look at all the social service agencies that are hosted here, really, um, you know, they're, they're um, the foundation and they're here in Morristown and supporting the whole Memorial County and even Memorial Valley. Um, so looking across the board and looking also at the substance um, prevention, treatment and recovery, uh, we also, there's a line in the, um, in the chapter 13 that also talks about a subcommittee that looks at prevention, treatment, and recovery um, of substance use and misuse. And so, uh, as Val said, we've been part of, uh, I've lived here for, I guess, almost a decade now on Park Avenue. Um, we've been really connected and care about our town. Uh, we know that in the past, Healthy Memorial Valley, uh, I saw coming up, there was something Memorial Valley Rail Trail um, kiosk something. I'm curious what that's about because we were part of putting, you know, the signs that say healthy community. Those were part in partnership with Healthy Memorial Valley, the dog park, the signage, and thinking about substance-free spaces. So there's a lot of potential for what um, a group of residents and professionals in Morristown that, you know, that can come together to say, what does health and wellness look like? And some people say, oh, health and wellness, okay, how does that have to do with the other chapters in the town plan? But it's unique to Mars now to have a health and wellness chapter to begin with, and we should say, let's look at that, because not every town has it, it's not a requirement, and I think that it's really valuable that Mars town did move forward with that chapter. Um, and also, it, the health and wellness of our town relates to our economics, it relates to every other aspect of our lives here, and so how we envision that is so important. Um, I wanted to just also mention that uh, just a little bit more. I haven't introduced myself to most of the select board and not in this capacity with Don. And so just Healthy Lamoille Valley does so much in um, our community. We're grateful for the town allocations that go to the Family Center, which we're a program of. And I just want to <coughs> give you these um, folders and then talk about one of the things. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Eric? Thank you, Allison. I really want to Sarah. Um, so we do so many things in the community, you know, we're working with, we're a coalition, so that means we work with all people, everybody is welcome as a coalition member, from our retailer, from our, uh, you know, a retailer in the community, and you may go down to Riverbend, for example, and a previous rent there was for the mural in the back of, uh, uh, that's the Nepali, Kind of river, probably like that was a grant because that used to travel. That was a big Budweiser sign, I believe. It was this predates me, but you know, things that are about healthy community design and just um, living in a place and that you know, the aspect of healthy community living and the environment around us. Um, and we're also involved in like a campaign, um, like this one, 
I'll just show the stickers to you guys. You know, youth in our community, um, you know, some youth in our community are using substances, unfortunately, um, at high levels, and they are using substances um, too early in life. And as we know, the earlier you start using as a young person, the more likely later in life you'll become dependent. This is you know, evidence-based. And so we look at increasing protective factors in our community and reducing risk factors um, towards youth development. I guess the teacher and interacting with youth, that seems familiar. So we do it on lots of different levels. So we do it on the policy level in municipality and being connected in um, you know, on that level, town plan, et cetera. But also, um, this is about just in the summertime, when you think about hosting a barbecue or whatever is being hosted and you know, there's that cooler with the drinks in it. And when it's mixed alcohol and non-alcohol in that one cooler, then that leads to, and we know from people who have um, told us later in life, when was it the first time that they started drinking alcohol, which is the most used substance and su most misused substance um, currently. And it was at a party at a home of a friend or someone or their own home where they went and they took a Coke, took a beer, slid the beer in a hoodie, right? Had, a, uh, had the Coke, walked away with that, and then went into the woods to drink a beer with friends or whatever as a young person. And so these stickers are just to kind of highlight for us to have you know, the 21 plus, the alcoholic beverages in a separate cooler, just to separate them. And then when I went in with these last year to Riverbend Market, for example, Tim said, oh, let me put them up on the, on the coolers in the back just to make it really clear where people are in the store, what's being offered. Um, so these types of examples of things that we do on the spectrum from working with youth, working with retailers, working with municipalities, um, you know, whatever support that we can, we are here on all of those different levels. Um, and the toolkit is this document that really looks at, I asked you all about um, visioning for health in our community. Um, this document is one that can be used as a workbook, can be used to help facilitate the Health and Wellness Committee or the Substance Treatment Prevention Recovery Community. And it really just has a lens of like, you are a kid in our community, where do you see substances? Where do you see substances misused? Where, are, where is it normed for you? And when things are normed, and the community norms are all about it, then it's more likely that they'll think, well, that's what I should do, and it's normed for me too. Access and availability in a community matters as well, so when there's more access and availability of substances, more likely youth will use. So this is a way to kind of break it down, think about what you you want, have that time to to uh, sink into it. And we're also um, in the revision process of this document so that it's also applicable, not just for municipal leaders, but for um, lots of different stakeholders. So, Belle, anything else? <laughs> So we'd really like to encourage um, the support um, you know, of following up on this town plan item um, or these town plan items and, and taking a look at it now that we're in motion in this new town plan and uh, to seek advice on um, where the select board thinks that um, this fits and hopefully it does in the plan to enhance the health and well-being of our community. Yeah, I would say the only piece of the last, last thing I'd like to say is that we, we definitely want to partner with other um, agencies and other uh, stakeholders in the community. So the senior center, the community center, the um, you know, various employers and such. So hence, the, hence having some sort of a committee to be able to do that. Employers and residents, and I don't think Val and I at all think that we need to be the ones spearheading it. We can help to convene it, but it's really the town to, and who comes together from the town to care, who cares about this to um, to put it together. So we're bringing it to start to help move it forward in whatever capacity we can play, great, but otherwise, you know, just how to, how to move it forward. So besides our support, are you looking for any particular action on our part tonight? I don't know what's necessary. I think, you know, it's in the town plan, but I think you were unclear on, okay, now it's there, but what's the next step? Is it ad hoc? Is it a call, a call for interest? Is it a convening? What would you prefer a as structure. a structure, of, and where does it go? How does it? Who do we, who do we report to? You know, things like that. Right. Yeah. If well, we if we did establish an official committee, they would report back to the select board. Correct. But I guess the question is, do we need to? You know, does the board need to put a an official committee together? Is that is that what you're hoping that we 
would do, or? I, I think we want, you know, what's, what's the right next step, I right. think, is what makes sense. Like, clearly, you know, Val and I have, have worked on this. We've planted some seeds with different, you know, when I go to meetings, I say, like, oh, it's so great, Marcia, you know, with people from the mental health partners, from the recovery center, from, uh, we were with Kathy Cookson over at the community center, you know, or Val was, um, you know, just all the different people around, even at the schools. And I can imagine there'll be people who are interested in being connected in, but we haven't done anything official. It's just, this is in the town plan, how great, right? right? So I don't know what you think is the right move for it. Well, it seems like, I mean, with the housing, uh, although Trisha's ready to speak here, she might have. I do have just some thoughts on this. Trisha Fowler, yeah. town. Just do you want to come up to the microphone? Uh, Thanks. Um, I would suggest you do ad hoc, just start on this one. Okay, we've seen a lot of committees come. You know, you've been involved, both of you, in a lot of different things that the town has gone through. Um, get some meeting the game. Get your ad hoc committee together. Come up with a plan. Think about you know who's going to be involved, what what your goals are, what you're looking to do, and then I would say come back before the select board and at that point. Because I think at this point you're appointing a committee. There's no real structure here. There's no right. meeting this yet. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's great what you're doing, but that would just be my own effort of working here for a lot of years. Thank you, Tricia. Yeah. Does that make sense, Val and Allison, yeah. that you would put together an ad hoc committee and then come back at some future date and right. like let it? What we said, it's not, we don't necessarily want to run this, but we want to be technical assistance and then we want it to be community led. So. I hope you would, so, I hope you would be on the committees. <laughs> so. So we can help to convene, right? Like we can we we can help to convene a meeting, put out you know the you know put out the well. Hopefully this will get some coverage potentially, but that would be exciting. But um, to for people to check out the wellness chapter, right? And to say like and who's interested and, and start to bring you know those uh, professional partners as well as anyone who lives here or works here, you know, to become involved. But is that the process that, that ad hoc would take? Trish? Well, like, that's what I would imagine. I mean, you know, Get your group oh, together, come up with some kind of agenda. I think you're gonna, you know, the best case, because it sounds like you're gonna have to have somebody who basically is the organizer initially mm -hmm. to get it, exactly. yeah, to get it going. Yeah. So you might put it out there and reference the chapter, here's where we're going, mm -hmm. uh, and see if you can get somebody to kind of spearhead um, you know, I know with the housing, Todd auto, uh, Todd volunteered automatically. You know, I don't know that I I don't have time unfortunately. Um, but perhaps if you put it out on front page form and get somebody who can just help you start navigating this ad hoc process, because um, otherwise, it, you know, nobody's leading it. Nobody knows. <laughs> Chris, um, I might suggest that the board take some ownership in terms of getting language from you folks in terms of some sort of an advertisement, not really appropriate word, but we could put it on our website. Mm -hmm. We could uh, put it on front porch forum from the municipality. We could share it on the Morristown Facebook page that we're interested in forming an ad hoc committee uh, to um, work on the wellness goals um, that you folks presented tonight. Mm -hmm and to please you know uh, reach out to the municipality perhaps to judy alberry just if there is interest and then from there assuming that there is if you would be willing to help them organize and come up with a platform and approach it that way there's no cost involved in terms of the advertisement it gets the word out you help organize the group and then they would uh, you know yeah, does that the seem reasonable could, could it can we also, I mean, with, with moving this forward, the subcommittee part of the substance prevention, treatment, and recovery, can that be part of the description, or do you see that as a separate entity? I think we walk before we run. Yeah. We, we walk before we run. We get some interest in folks and then see if there's, if there's you know, a subgroup out of that that would like to take that on. Mm -hmm. yeah. see, see how big a mission they want to they wanna have in front of them. Yeah. If, if there are comments about the town plan information and some of the 3450 um, <coughs> stuff. How should the board relay that? Those questions or, or look for some answers on some of that? Val and I can 
can feel. Yeah, I have my I can feel my car here. My. Yeah, you know. I don't mean to take up time tonight, yeah. but if there's yeah, something that how somehow we can communicate with you at least yeah. to have that, that would be helpful. And I'll just say, Morristown already is at gold level for. Nice. Right. Nice. Val's good at that. She'll like pre check for you. Um, but it's also about setting goals around those, those topics, those three behaviors, really, right. um, which are um, physical activity, nutrition, nutrition. and um, reducing tobacco use and, and exposure. But we kind of extend that also to substance use in, in right. general. Right. Yeah. And you know, as you can see, also in the health and moral value folder, any, anything you know that we can help. Um, we, I think it was a long time ago, and Eric was on the select board um, pre-pandemic. Uh, we were trying to get in here every other month to give a little update on what's going on in the community, having students come in, and on topics of your concerns. So if folks are interested in specific, um, you know, concerning topics related to um, substance use and misuse, we can help support that and do like little, you know, five, ten minute every couple of meetings on what's going on, what we're working on, or, or you know, address anything. Like we just had a town. Um, Hall in um, Lamoille, which was addressing um, vape prevention, youth vape prevention. We have tobacco prevention task force. We have information on local cannabis control commissions, like more information to offer. Um, you know, if you're interested, there's some in there. Uh, so they're all different topics we can, we can talk about. Great. By the way, before you leave, if you are about to leave, um, you're, there were some comments about river access in there. And uh, I know that there's a couple of individuals over in Johnson whose names you might want. They contacted me about a year ago, Eric Noose and Doug Moldy, and they are very interested in Morristown building, uh, building more river access. Most of the towns along the Lamoille River do have river access right now, and we're a little bit lacking in that area, so. We do have river access at our boat. Yeah, yeah. right. I know Doug and Eric were just looking to see if we could expand that, especially getting around the dams in particular. Yeah. Great. Well, anyone present or who sees this on Green Mountain Access TV or anywhere, you know, I hope that there's interest in all of that can be funneled into, um, you know, the convener so that we can help support um, all interests to, related to these topics. Great. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Val. You. Okay. So I'm going to move on to community development update. Tricia? Yeah, I think Paul wants to jump in here just for half a second. Okay. Just quickly. Um, I was asked to have Derek Small, our highway foreman, join us for meetings, and he is here. So I just wanted to uh, ask the select board and community members to welcome him. I'm going to have him come up and he can speak if he so desires. Great. Yeah. Come on up, Derek. Hello, everybody. <coughs> Derek Small. Uh, Welcome. Just took out a former position. Congratulations. In April. Been here four and a half years. And you'll be taking over the town, the town garage. Town garage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. Well, thank you, Derek. Thanks for coming in yes, and introducing you. yourself. Thank you. Welcome. Put a thank face you. on a name. Yes, yes we will indeed. see you around town. <laughs> oh, yes, <we> will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks, Paula. Tricia. Okay. You are up. You got a Thanks. few things to talk about. I, I think now I sort of met all of you here <laughs> along the way as I'm the person that kind of comes in now. Um, as some of you know, I've worked here for almost 13 years, community development. It's been a long road watching our community change, uh, grow. Um, I do events. I do um, Wednesday Night Live, which I think you all got a schedule of, 10 weeks of live music. We have uh, Doggy Day Out, I play in 4th of July, Rocktoberfest, Festival of Lights. So a lot of different events, but also there's a lot more behind my job. Like for years, I have written grants. We have new sidewalks in our downtown, through downtown transportation clubs, uh, Oxbow Park, for the pavilion, the swing sets, the basketball hoops, the garden center. They were all like grants here and there with funding sources that um, I brought to the table for the town. Um, I love the arts. You know, you see the chairs out there, the tree over at the library. But the public art, in my opinion, and this is solely my opinion, not do community development. But yes, do community development too. Art makes the community. It makes you want to look around. It makes you think about what else is in this community. And I have worked very hard on that. And MAC is our downtown organization. I don't know if many of you have been involved a little bit, Laura. Oh, yeah. Um, 
They're another driver. It's a volunteer-based group. It is eight of us on the board right now. We do the planters, the painted chairs. They do the festival of lights. They are the volunteers behind our Oktoberfest. You know, our Oktoberfest brings in what thousand, fifteen hundred people through our community. It's a, a big event for our community out here on the street. Uh, another update is the Moyle Valley Rail Trail. As most of you know, it's going to be completed here in by Memorial Day. We still have a couple little gaps. Jackie just wrote to me today. Jackie Casino from VTrans. And so Matt, for downtown organization, and a couple other volunteers are doing some green up, clean up around our kiosk. We want our kiosk to be much more welcoming. It is at the bottom of Pleasant Street, if any of you don't know where it is. Um, <coughs> Barnes Energy is going to put in a bike repair station. Nice. We are cleaning it out quite a bit. We're putting some new benches in. We're hoping to put solar on the roof so it lights. If you were riding bikes or walking in the evening, you want to see what's in our kiosk for information. They're going to add, the pollinators group is working with us, and they're going to add a swath of blueberries in one section down there. I think like a dozen or so. Did you want to? Yeah. We really want it to be a... Uh, a place that people come and see. So it would spark your interest. What does Morristown have? If they're willing to do this, I have to go see what our community has. That is what I do, is try to bring people into our community, see how great we are. And I do feel like we have a great community. And I want to thank you all for being on our select board because as a person that sits in the back seat and works in my little <laughs> office in the back, it is a trying time. So for everyone else, so, okay? This is the most trying time since I have worked for the town more. <laughs> thank, thank you, Trisha. Any questions? I'm sorry. And Trisha, I just want to say thank you for all that you do. You're right. The chairs that are around town, the flowers that are around town, the music festivals during the summer, Wednesday night. I mean, it just, uh, there's a lot of people in this town that really appreciate what you're doing for us. Thank you. So thank and you. I have worked with many, many, many organizations in this town. And it is a great town. Everyone, especially if you're new or you want to be involved in the community, reach out to me. I love the volunteers. <laughs> okay, any other comments? No, thank you. Okay, thanks. <coughs> Number three, um, discuss canceling the select board meeting on June 5th. June 5th is our, our regularly scheduled select board meeting, our first meeting in June. And uh, it is, of course, the day before the election, June 6th. So this room will be unavailable. This room will be taken up by um, machines and tables and whatnot. So the suggestion is going to be to, and I'll need a motion, I guess, from the board to uh, cancel that meeting. And uh, we have another agenda item coming up right afterwards to um, replace that meeting with a special meeting. I would move to and I would just, before we get a motion, I would ask you whoever would like to do a motion to include to allow our chair to sign the warrants on that day, which would need to be done. Uh, when, um, when would our next regular select board meeting be then? The next one would be two weeks after that, June 19th. Can I make a correction? June 20th. June 19th is a holiday. June 19th is a holiday, so June 20th would be the next. And what I'm about to suggest is a special meeting. If the board should decide to cancel that, a special meeting at the end of May. And so I, we don't currently have anything on uh, May 29th? We do not. Because no, it's first and third Mondays, not yeah. every other Monday. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So this Google. is our second meeting in May. Yeah, Google doesn't understand. They they have to do every other <laughs> Well, you tell they, Google. Google is mess. Okay. I get it now. All right. Okay, so I would so. entertain a motion at this point. Sure. Well, I would move to um, cancel the meeting, uh, regular scheduled meeting for on June fifth. Uh, and uh, give uh, permission for the chair to sign the warrants on that day. Okay, I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second by Travis. Any discussion? So I have a motion to uh, cancel the meeting on June 5th and to allow our chair, Judy Bickford, to sign the warrants in our stead. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. So, next agenda item to discuss a special meeting. The special meeting would be, I would suggest, the 25th of May, which is a Thursday. You don't need to do it around this man's schedule, but I have a trip planned for a couple of months now to visit my new granddaughter in Utah on the next Monday, so I will not be here next Monday. Um, our chair is not here this week, so I'm going to suggest May 25th when we can all be here for the purpose of the hiring committee conversation, in which, at which point we would talk about the composition of that committee, and at that point we would talk about the process by which that committee would work forward. So, that is my suggestion. I would entertain a motion if well, the board feels likewise. Um, I, yeah. I have a comment, but we should make the motion first. I'm, yeah, let's make them. I, I would move that uh, we schedule a special meeting on May 25th to um, talk about uh, the process uh, of the, uh, in the committee of the uh, town administrator uh, position. Great. So I have a motion to hold a special meeting on May 25th to discuss the, um, the hiring committee for the new town administrator. Do I have a second? I will second. I have a second by Laura. Discussion. I w it seems that we should um, consult both um, Judy and uh, Paula <clears throat> uh, timeline-wise time um, so that we're not, you know, train wrecking your folks' work. Oh, it's um, my job to be here. So oh, but I mean, just time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more concerned about giving you enough time for any decisions that we make. To promote them or advertise them is what I, I'm saying. I'm not, I don't think that I need to be involved in that conversation, to be honest, Laura. Okay. I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken, but I don't think it's me. Okay. I'm just, yeah, thank you. That's yeah. a great question, Laura. And I, I might add, I don't think I'm jumping the gun by saying June 2nd that we've extended the uh, advertisement to June 2nd. Paula, you can speak to this better than me, probably. Uh, Paula Beanie, HR Director. Um, the 25th works fine. Okay. For me, um, and I've already yes, we've extended. It's not on the agenda to discuss this, so right. I'm not sure where yeah. my limits are. Um, we've extended it to June second, and okay. we'll continue to extend and do that. Um, it's I think it's a healthy process to not put it too far out because right. then yeah. you can't sit idle and you don't get them. Yeah. Um, and I've already redone the timeline this morning, so I just okay. haven't sent it out. So okay. Happy for okay. And that can be discussed more on the 25th. Okay, yeah. that's just one and done. Thank you. Bring Other, them into the conversation. Uh, okay. You're welcome. Other discussion? <clears throat> Any discussion on the board first? I'm good with the timeline and the date. Good with the timeline and the date. Tom? Yes. Uh, the last, uh, you want to introduce yourself, please? Tom, so yes, Mark. The last board meeting, I think you said there was an allowed two uh, town residents on that board. That's two minutes, I believe. Have you decided to stay with that two minutes, or have you, I mean, the two uh, uh, the town residents, or will we find out at this town meeting whether there are going to be town residents? There's been no decision to stay with it or not stay with it, and that's, of course, a part of the purpose of the May 25th meeting. So we're not we're not going to talk about that tonight because that's not worn tonight. But why was it? Because our ch our board chair is not here, and not having our board chair here when we're talking about hiring a new town administrator seems. Yeah. And it and it also, we can do it on the twenty fifth, Tom. Okay. It you know it's still long. It's still a week before the applicants are going to be due. The applications are going to be due. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Any other discussion? Um, just for clarification, sake, will this. Be at our normal 6 30, or are we going to do it at 6? We've changed special meetings to 6. Do you need That's to a good question. Specify that? We have typically done 
Eric, any thoughts? I'm a fan of standardization. 5.30 is when we start our business meetings. I think we started at a sixth one meeting because right. of the availability of one of the members. We started a little bit later. So. And you meant 5.30 when you said 6.30? Yes. yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I think Chris was coming in all the time, but just we oh. have varied it, so um, we should right. just discuss it whether yeah. we want to try to keep it all at five thirty. I think consistency is good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with five thirty. Would that be agreeable to your motion? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Of canceling the meeting and moving to the twenty fifth? Aye. That would be. Unanimous. And I, I'm assuming at this point that we're going to inform Judy. We don't have to. We're going to assume that it's okay with Judy. We are going to assume that it's okay with Judy. I have not discussed this with Judy, so but we're we know she's out of town this week, but we're expecting her to be back in town next week. She, I think she was aware of the possibility of this coming up. Because she did speak to the fact that it's a long time between now and the next business meeting and deadlines and the structure that Paula has put in place. It made sense that there would be something between now and the informational meeting okay. on June 1st. So. Okay. Thank you. That should be expected. Okay. I'm going to move on to number four. Waive the building permit fee for the Green Mountain Habitat for Humanity build on Olive Street. And you, the board members, have in their packet a letter. And uh, I'm assuming the board has had a chance to read the letter. I, I had two questions about this letter, Eric. And one is, there is, is there precedence for this? Have we done this in the past? This has been uh, a matter of routine when you have a local nonprofit that is uh, applying to do this. Uh, the current house it's they built in the neighboring lot uh, you waived the fee the board at that time waived the fees uh, for the filing for that okay and that was just done just recently well the house they, they completed the house just a couple of years in the build process yeah. so uh, I was on the board when when we did that prior yeah there's also a sentence in here it says as you can see from the email from David Heller that I didn't have attached in my packet I don't know if the other board members did but um, it says it is not possible for the lines on 211 Olive Street to be placed underground. Therefore, we are requesting that this requirement be removed. I would assume that the select board cannot override a requirement from the DRB. I think you're absolutely right. I think that would have to go back to the DRB for approval. Yeah. So I assume that sentence really means that they're making a request to the DRB, not to us. I, I agree with you. Okay. Just separation of powers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, okay. yeah, it just wasn't clear there. <laughs> Would you come up? Yeah. Just before before you, you say anything, any any other thoughts from the board? No, I have the same question as you, Don, on the leather, but I'm going to open that. Okay, good. You're set. Hi, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Hey, Dan. Uh, and I'm on the Habitat board. Um, and um, it hasn't been come up for a while. Uh, but at the time we did the first one, we tried to get them put it underground uh, from the corner of Olive Street, which is kind of about this wide. Uh, and the water light said they wouldn't do it. They, we don't like to do anything underground. We'll figure out how to get that one, and we'll figure out how to get this one. And it's going overhead. So I don't know what. And I think it's a newer requirement of the DRB, but water and light hasn't been agreeable to it. And I haven't been involved in the process, so I don't know that. That just happened again, and that's why that letter says what it says. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's something like that, and again, we don't get one way or the yeah. other. Yeah. It's a DRB yeah. purview. Okay. That's permitting. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dan. So if we do entertain a motion here, it would just be a motion to waive the building permit fee. Correct. Okay. Well, I would move to. Um, Waive the zoning fees for the habitat uh, for humanity um, build um, on Olive Street. Okay, I have a motion from Chris. Do I have a second? You said zoning fee as opposed to permit fee. The, I meant permit fee. Okay, thank you. Just permit. Yeah. So we're, we have a motion to waive the building permit fee for the Green Mountain Habitat for Humanity build on Olive Street. Second? I'll second. Got a second by Travis. Don, specifically, what you're waiving is a 
$272 fee uh, for the permit along with a $15 recording fee for the town clerk's office. Would you like that as part of the motion? Total $287. Just for like transparency, to yes. Include that in your motion? Why don't we start over? Okay. Oh, uh, we send my uh, previous motion. Um, was there a second on that? There was. Do you want I'll to rescind, rescind my second. second. Okay. Motion is gone. Okay. So let's start over. Um, I would move to waive the permit fee and the recording fee uh, for the Habitat, Habitat for Humanity home on um, Olive Street. $272 would be the permit fee and $15 would be the recording fee for a total of $287. Thank you, Chris. Do we have a second? I'll second again. We have a second by Travis. Any further discussion? Okay, so we have a uh, motion to waive the building permit fee for a total of $287 for the Green Mountain Habitat for Humanity Build on Olive Street. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Okay, number five. Approve improvements to Ross Hill. So, Mr. Grimes, I think you're up. He is here also. I would point out the, the Doyle family who owns the property and for whom Kenny is doing the work are here on the audience tonight. They were able Wait. to rearrange their schedule to make it. Appreciate them being here. Okay. I'll just start by saying, um, Mr. Doyle. Hi. Nice to meet you. Um, before, before Kenny comes up and talks, uh, Kevin and I, Kevin Barrows and I, did visit this project approximately a month ago. And uh, we went out there and I think it's, is it's, well, I just want to throw that out there. Maybe we can throw some opinion in on the project in a second. Kenny? Kenny Grimes. Um, I'm here to help the, uh, the Doyles. They're trying to improve the uh, the Ross Hill Road, and just so they can get access to their property. Um, it is a class four road. It's off Ron Terrell Road, which is also a class four road. Um, the objective is to keep it with the same character of the uh, of the area, just basically to have access to their land. So there is a there is a road down through there, but obviously without hasn't any improvements have been done. To it. It's not the objective to bring it up to a big wide road, just a driveway, basically. And the total length of this improvement? It's about 900 feet. And there was a little culvert? Uh, There's a culvert that's there um, at one point. I'm not sure when it was done. It's a relatively new culvert, but it does need to be lowered. When it's installed, it's, it's too high up. So to improve the drainage, it does need to be lowered. Um, the culvert appears to be in good shape, but it'll be determined when it when it does get removed. Um, there may be a small section added to it, but overall, it, it appears to be in good shape. But we can we can look at that when it, when we remove it to lower the, the, the right. area. And I know when Kevin and I were there, there was at least one adjacent property owner. Yeah. Um, it seemed to be communicated to me that the property owners were all in favor of this? Yeah, I think Mr. Doyle has spoken with uh, quite a number of the... Uh, Would you like to come up to the microphone? Just introduce yourself, please. Uh, Chris Doyle, uh, so, uh, yes, uh, we've spoken with uh, uh, the streeters and uh, 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 Mr. Pecum, Todd Pecum, and uh, the other uh, abutters, uh, Mr. Um, O'Brien uh, 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 passed uh, several weeks ago. I did speak with his son about the project uh, just a few days ago. I've never met with him. And uh, uh, as uh, Kenny said, the, uh, the uh, people living in the neighborhood have a, well, been up here. It's a quiet place. And uh, we we're just trying to get our own axe. We we're trying to make anything bigger or change the area. But right now, we just can't drive down to our uh, property with uh, passenger cars, and uh, we'd like to be able to do that. Right. And you're willing to take on the expense of yes, the improvements? Yeah. And the improvements I seem to remember would require cutting some trees and widening? Yeah, there's going to be some trees that will need to be cut. 
to improve the drainage down through there. Yeah. And uh, to widen it, not so car. Yeah. Great. And and the survey is part of. Yeah, the survey is going to be done prior to any construction being done, just to make sure that. Stay within the boundaries. Stay within the right. And Kevin Barrow, Superintendent of Highways, uh, highway objections or concerns from the highway department? No. Um, and as far as the culvert there, if there's any issues when you pull it out, because supply or something that would be needed. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. So just so those on Zoom know, our fire chief was asking how wide the road would be <coughs> to make sure that fire trucks could, in fact, get out there. Okay. Well, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve improvements to Ross Hill. I'll make a motion to approve the suggested improvements to the Class 4 road on Ross Hill. Okay, so I have a motion by Travis. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second by Laura. Any more discussion? I just asked that uh, when Ken's done with the work out there, that he give, get in touch with Kevin, to have Kevin come out and do a walkthrough with him to inspect the work. I, I have no question that the work will be done appropriately, but I think it's uh, fair to say that we should have eyes, a representative from the town have eyes on it. Yeah. Right. Should I amend my motion to include that? I, I'm I'm okay with it not being amended. I, I'm sure Kenny's going to make the call. Yeah, <laughs> we work a lot with the Grimes. Okay, that's great. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do I have any further? Go ahead. Would you come up to the microphone and introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Eric Landy. I live on Ross Hill Road. I live on the other side. Uh, basically, the town maintains the road up to my property and not beyond it. I'm concerned that uh, this could lead to further improvements to the class four road that goes beyond my property. Uh, right now, I've lived there for over 25 years. It's been very quiet. There's no traffic. And with all the talk about um, ATVs on class four roads and improvements, um, my feeling is that suddenly uh, trucks are gonna start coming through, um, people will have more access to it, and it is very disturbing. We have over 100 animals. It's disturbing to them. We live on both sides of the road. Part of my property is on one side. Part of my property is on the other side. And if this leads to the kind of disturbance that um, my imagination is taking me to, I'm against it. Now you live, if I correct me, Eric, if I say this wrong, but you are coming in from the other end of Ross Hill, correct? That's right. So, and Kenny, the project that you're suggesting. Coming in from Ross, from uh, Ron, Ron Terrell. Ron Terrell. Ron Terrell. Yes. You know, any guesses on the distance from where your improvements would be to Eric's? I'm unaware of his property line, so okay. I, I, don't, I don't have any distance to where property <laughs> So basically, we're coming in from two ends. Eric, you're on this end. And, yes. Uh, the Doyles are on the other end. And I think that's really realistically the, the main objective is to keep the character of the, how it is. It's just they want, they want to be able to have access to their property. Right. It's safe to say there's a significant buffer between the two ends. Dude, or there is I a buffer. I, I shouldn't use the word significant. I can't say how much there yeah. is through there, but I think it is a fair distance. We're going to be talking about the Class 4 road ordinance tonight. And just just so you know, um, it is proposed right now in our draft policy that 
only registered motor vehicles are allowed on class four roads, uh, on class four town highways, I should say. Um, snowmobiles may be allowed by permission and ATVs are prohibited on class four roads. Those, that provision has been taken out. So as, as we will be discussing that particular piece in the next section when we start talking. So you may want to stick around if you, if you have the time to be a part of that conversation on the class four highways. I think that would be germane. Yeah. The zoning administrators pointed out to me on the maps we have, I would have to have do some research or have some research done in the town clerk's office. <coughs> a portion of Ross Hill Road from the Doyle's property toward Mr. Landy's property, a portion of that is a legal trail. So the class four road does not go all the way through according to our town maps. Okay. But I'm, I'm saying that because I've seen it on the map listed as a legal trail, which means no motor vehicles on that section but then it turns back into a class four road at some point out there. Uh, but I'd have to have some research done in order to, to find the, the, the points at which it starts and stops. But as far as Mr. Lane's concern about vehicles traversing from one end to the other, as it currently sits on the map, the legal trail stops that from happening. Yeah. So. And I would also yeah. say, like as Mr. Landy knows, we had a pretty significant discussion of ATVs here not too long ago, and that was rather resoundingly uh, put to put to rest, at least for at least for now. The map does indicate the class four road goes to the Doyle property. It's from the Doyle property beyond. It's a legal trail. So okay. Okay. Yeah. Any so we have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? No. Are we ready? All those in favor of <coughs> approving the improvements to Ross Hill as suggested, as presented by Kenny and Kenny Grimes and Mr. Doyle, say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Okay, housing committee update. You come on up to the microphone. Selena Rooney, Morrisville. Um, three of you were on the um, board when I got permission for the farm to cut down the trees on Bowling Road to um, widen it up. Um, but we do have permission to do that, and following on what Kenny's just done with. Wanting to improve Ross Hill, I'd like permission to improve the Bullmoose Road as well in the same manner, except 16 feet wide instead of 14. <coughs> so we're not. Well, we could warn that for another meeting. You wouldn't right. be able to make a motion on that tonight. It's not a warned, uh, warned item, but we can bring it back. And as Chris has said, we are going to talk about class four roads. It is action we can't take because it hasn't been warned. <coughs> the warning was specific for Ross Hill. But I think we should, yeah, I think that should come up again as a discussion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the sooner the better because I think that in fairness to the Roonies, um, this has been lingering for months now. And I think that, um, you know, when we can get this on an agenda item, um, you said it was already previously approved, is that correct? For cutting the trees, not to improve the road. Okay. Gotcha. So I guess my question is, uh, would we like to have a formal request for the improvement of the road so that it becomes a, an agenda item yep. that we can specifically earmark for a day to, to talk about so that all parties can be available to do that sooner than later? Yeah. Yeah, it would need to be June nineteenth, right? Would be the earliest we could do that. Is that the next regular June meeting? Twentieth. Oh yeah, sorry, twentieth. That's the next regular business meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best we can do. I'm not sure if it's been going on. What hasn't been on the agenda? I'm not. I'm not sure about that, but. So we've been working through the class four road policy. The right. last meeting so, we had, okay. uh, I took down the notes from the, the audience. I was seeing head nods from the board, so I had an indication of which direction to go with those edits. Those edits are incorporated okay. in the class four policy. 
Uh, it might seem there's a little bit of a cart before the horse with uh, Ken's project. However, um, I captured the intent from the audience. It's in the edits for the class order policy. I felt pretty strongly that we had a document that could get approved tonight. Okay. Uh, um, and, and then moving forward, if there are additional tweaks, so to speak, that need to be done to a policy, it's very easy to do that. But I wanted to get a policy in place this evening so that we could move forward uh, with a, a standard practice. Thank you. That explains it. I wasn't sure. nervous. It was a little cloudy to me. I, I, so Selena had uh, requested and received permission from a, a board right. whose makeup was much different than it is today uh, to go ahead and cut the trees. That that project has recently started, correct, Selena? We um, have just done some work on the outer portion of the road. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, so that's uh, I, I didn't put it on the agenda because the permission they granted, but no work had been done for a few weeks. So I didn't know where we were at, but I, again, it's okay. the improvement that it's not an issue. We'll bring it back as soon as we can the next uh, the next business meeting. I think the best we're going to be able to do is the next business meeting. So, are you hoping to um, do the logging and the road improvement all at the same time? Is that the goal? Because you have permission now to log. Is that yes. that's correct? So between now and the 20th, it was, it was financially, financially viable for you. You could complete that part of it. So following the meeting on the 20th, you got permission to do the road improvement, the trees would be gone. Does that make sense? Does that meet your timeline? It doesn't meet the timeline. I asked um, to be put on the agenda back in January, and I have not yet, yet so. You, but we did in February, we did give you approval to cut the trees, yes. but just not the road improvement part of it. So we did grant the request at that time. So and now we've got the road improvement request coming. And that's a separate, <coughs> has been a separate request. If you could introduce yourself. Carter Phillips Stowe. I'm just here because I, you know, obviously had property on Classville Road. And specifically, I remember the request to improve the road, cut the trees, improve the road. No one wanted to make a decision on it. So the, the <clears throat> I guess, middle of the road was to go ahead and cut the trees. But I remember the request was we need to do it to get hairs for first cut up in the field. And then now we have another request that came after has been approved. So I just worry about the process here. I was going to say, it's been like four, four months. What are our options here? So there is no option to make a motion for approval on right. Bloomless Road tonight because it's not a warrant agenda item. Whether I'm right, wrong, or indifferent for the right. timeline that we've had for putting these on the agenda, uh, that, that could be researched. Uh, for the assignment of blame, I'll take the blame. We have discussed this issue and road class for road policy during several meetings in the last four months. We are as close as we have ever been to an approved policy tonight. This project has been discussed even as late as last fall when I when Kenny first approached me on this project. So as far as timeline and getting people fair opportunity, I, I'm sorry, that's all I can say. We can get this in for the next business meeting. That's as quick as I can bring that about. But um, for my own education here, it has to be a, a, a formal business. It cannot be at a, the special meeting on the. Well, if I, it's, it's a, I'll let the board make the decision on that. I've tried to keep it the business out matters yeah. out of the special meetings. Yes. Because when we say a special meeting, it has a direct intent. Yes. And we start bringing other things in mm -hmm. now. People might assume that we're trying to slide something by and that's not the impression we're trying to give understood so, yeah, well we, the, the special meeting would be with a warned agenda 48 it, hours before it would be and i guess uh, from a different perspective um 
because this is seems to be a question in terms of how this, you know, the process did or did not take place. Yeah. I guess I would advocate rather than to wait another month and a half that we would take special consideration to uh, look at this on May 25th um, so that um, it would be uh, something that would be more workable for the landowner, assuming that the policy gets passed tonight and we have a working document that we would consider this on May 25th. That, that's the will of the board that's doing approve this tonight also has a requirement for notifying about any landowners so um, Alexia Maisel is uh, appears to be on zoom tonight um, so if if that's what you want me to do I think we have the parties that are directly impacted on this uh, here tonight so uh, I will put that on the warning for the for the special that's, that's if everybody else agrees to that, that I, piece uh, of it. So, okay as long as we can legally do so. Um, yes. We did, as I think, as part of our motion for the special meeting earlier tonight, indicate that it was for the hiring process yes. with no other stipulations. I don't know if that, I just wanna make sure we're following the book yeah. here. I absolutely support getting the ball moving on this as, as fast as possible. I just don't wanna overstep on anything. So do we need to go back and amend that? previous motion no, i don't believe so even with special meetings the first thing we start with is are there any changes additions or deletions okay. to the meeting so it, it's built into the script for uh, all our meetings whether they're special or regular business meetings so okay. we would be able to add that without problem i'm good with it so you don't need a motion then to add this item to the agenda. no i i'm hearing clearly the intent of the board to have this on the, the agenda for that that night all right i'm good okay I just want to say, I, when we approved the cutting of the trees, I walked away from that meeting feeling like we had fulfilled the request. So um, I think, uh, yeah. But so I'm sorry for misunderstanding. Number six, housing committee update. Okay. Um. I'm on the housing committee. I did not realize I was doing this, but I'm going to be quick. Um, I have to thank Judy, um, who gave me very explicit um, directions. So the housing committee now is officially on Zoom, if anybody would like to join in. I'm not as smooth as Judy, but uh, you can Zoom in now uh, by contacting. We'll, have the, we'll notify you of the meetings. Um, we are, we have postponed any upcoming meetings. There is a very large study that's currently happening. Um, it had a lot of initials. Uh, again, I wasn't, didn't know I was doing this, so we're waiting for the, we decided it wasn't worth uh, go, having any other discussion until we had that actual data, and it's very um, solid data on housing, what the needs are and who and everything. So we're waiting for that data. So we anticipate that the next meeting will be in probably a month and a half. Um, so we will keep you posted. Okay. Thanks. Any questions, discussion? No. For Laura? No. Okay, number seven, approve the job descriptions. So in our packets, we have job descriptions for recreation summer camp counselor, Recreation Summer Camp Assistant Director and Recreation Summer Camp Director. Paula. Paula B. HR Director. Um, I have actually revised one. Um, I have the wonderful benefit of having an HR uh, select board member. So he reviewed them uh, and shared with me today that on the Assistant Director and Director, it did not include the fingerprinting and background check. Okay. Um, and then in one area, uh, it said uh, grade 5 through uh, 12 instead of age 5 through 12. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. So the job descriptions, um, the, <coughs> when the program was run by the volunteer coordinator and under the volunteer board, these positions were actually in place. We had counselors 
we had a director and assistant director position. Um, this is part of sort of working with Anna and then being new to the HR, trying to formalize you know, the hiring process and the job description. So like with any other position throughout the town, needs a job description. It's worked really well, um, actually, in sharing um, the drafts with the, with the counselors and the uh, assistant director and director that we are um, looking to hire. So it's just really, it's the formality piece of it and just ties into the hiring practice that we've implemented. Um, and I just do want to share that, again, the counselors, the training counselors, or the assistant director or directors that we've interviewed, it's been a wonderful panel of young adults and some of my most rewarding interviews, and I've been doing interviews for many, many years. So we have a really great group of, uh, just a great, great group of youth in our community, but I think we're even more fortunate that they are going to be part of the program that um, Anna's gonna be managing. Great. I, I have a quick question. <clears throat> the, um, when I was looking through the website, the website says six to 12. Did you guys change it this year to five to 12 ages? So for the summer camp, it's yeah. six to 12, but yeah. okay. um, for year round activities, we are, Okay. Yeah, come on up, Anna. <laughs> Thank you. Just curious, so I have my, I'm not giving the wrong information out. Um, yeah, so this could potentially be a pool of employees that would oh, okay. uh, say if we had different camps throughout the year, we could ask them um, if they would work for February vacation. Um, and there may be five year olds in that program, so we're just trying to cover. Right. Keeping your options open, I love that. Makes yes, sense. That makes sense. Thank you for explaining that. So, Anna, before you sit down, or maybe this is a Paula question, um, I noticed under camp counselor, there was a minimum age requirement of 16. Yes. But there wasn't for the assistant director or director. Okay. We can um, address that. Just wondering, yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. And by the way, I just want to say, you obviously have a lot of returning counselors. Yes. Yes. We, did. we had 13 returning counselors. Um, and we did, I would say that was some of the most rewarding work experience that I've had in this last year. We just reached out to counselors from last year, asked who would be interested in returning. Um, and we were pretty overwhelmed with the amount that decided to return. That's great. Um, we re-interviewed them. We, we gave them opportunity to make suggestions for our program, um, to kind of process things that they didn't like, things that they really did like about last year, and we've taken their suggestions to change our program going forward. And we really hope to continue to do that. Um, we have kind of a special opportunity, I think, to create the structure of this program that will really take it into the future for our town. It was a volunteer run, committee run program. So the structure, we don't have written into the recreation part of the structure for this. So it feels exciting to play the ground with that. Yeah, <clears throat> these are people <laughs> great documents where I'm being nitpicky, but yeah, you know, no, that comment, that's, kind of, that's we great. Will, we'll that. Thank you. Okay. So do we need a motion to accept these, uh, to approve these? Yes, please. Okay. So I'm looking for a... make it with that change, and we'll, we'll add that yeah. 16. It'd be a 16 yeah. minimum for all three positions? Correct. All... Because we do have some junior... We do have some junior um, counselors, so it is recommended um, for the the assistant director and the director, they would definitely be over the age of 16, because um, that's really the criteria, I mean, that's the experience um, that we're looking for. But we, I don't want it to read as if we're not going to hire um, anyone that's 15, because we have some pretty solid 15-year-olds, a 14-year-old that's actually returning this year at 15. So our thought is over the next couple of years, these individuals will continue to work every summer, and it just creates an even stronger um, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Paula. <clears throat> so I'll take a motion. So we're going to recommend on all three positions, recommend uh, age of 16, but not put it in stone. I know that yeah. 
And read the exact language off of the summer camp counselor in the motion if we want. Does that work? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead? For us? Sure. Um, I will make a motion to approve the job description for the summer camp counselor, the summer camp assistant director, and the summer camp director um, as presented with the one change that we add language that reads, preference will be given to candidates that are 16 years of age and older, but the coordinator reserves discretionary privilege in hiring someone who has not yet reached their 16th birthday, that that language be added into the description for the assistant director and the camp director. Thank you, Travis. Do I have a second? I second that. I have a second by Chris. Any further discussion? I got one. Come on up to the microphone. Is this a paid position? Are these paid positions? I believe they are. Yes. Hey, can I find out what, they, what would pay me 16 year Paula, the question is, what, what are we paying these individuals? Yes, yeah, so we can provide that information. Um, Anna and I have worked on that, um, and the pay scale is returning counselors get um, a bit more than the first year counselors. Uh, we've looked at uh, the junior counselors versus the first year and second year counselors. We've also looked at the um, lifeguards are paid for their lifeguard experience. So, but we can provide that. I think it, we can put it on the website. I'm not sure um, how you want us to get that information out, but we have it all broken. Okay. So you can make that information available to Mr. Cloutier? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Is that okay, Tom? All right. Thank Great. You. Okay. Um, any other discussion about this motion? I was just going to point out, I do believe there's offsetting revenue for the salaries to those camp counselors. Is that correct? Most of that's covered by program fees. I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Travis. Yeah, go ahead, Anna. Um, so we have taken a look at area um, summer camp counselor positions and we really have matched them with that just competitively um, just so you all know that they're they're pretty in par with the growing pounds nice. great thank you thank you Anna <clears throat> okay are we ready yeah Okay, so we have a motion to approve the job descriptions for the uh, summer camp counselor, summer camp assistant director, and the summer camp director with the addition of the preference will be given to candidates that are 16 years and older as read by Travis. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous, Judy. Okay, number eight, approve the desk officer's rate of pay for patrol work. Thank you, Jason. Introduce yourself. Jason, I'm going to chief. So we currently have two, we're two, down two spots in our patrol. So we currently have seven patrol officers. We should have nine. We have one vacancy and we have one officer on administrative leave. Standard protocol for an officer involved shooting. Um, we also have vacations coming up and training coming up, so we're a little short-handed. Our desk officer, who usually sits at the desk, answers the phone calls, does data entry, uh, takes walking complaints. He's on a whole different pay scale from our patrol officers for the union agreements. So we've done this in the past. Uh, we're looking to get permission to use him to fill some of our patrol shifts. Not a lot, but it's going to eliminate having us pay overtime for officers coming on their days off. So we'll just be paying him if he works over the schedule of the overtime. But chances are he'll be within his 8 to 4 range, 8 to 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So it shouldn't incur a lot of overtime. And it's probably going to be anywhere from some weeks to be zero hours, some weeks to be up to 20, but it's not a lot. Yeah. Okay. You see this as a cost savings overall in terms of trying to fill the spots that you need for coverage, for appropriate coverage? I do. It's going to definitely save our overtime. I'm sure it's going to save officers some uh, excess hours too that they're probably exhausted yeah. from. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a win win. It is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jason. One question, Chief. Uh, um, unions cool with this arrangement? Yes, they are. Uh, like I said, we did it once before and we brought it up again. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Great. 
Thank you. So, do I have a motion? I will make a motion. Hold the agenda up in front of me here. I'll make a motion to approve the um, desk officer being paid the patrol rate of pay for patrol work. Can you include the dollar amount? Yes. Is it in the memo here? It was, it's, it's not in the okay. memo. Oh, here it is. Oh. Here it is. Yeah. Suggested motion. Okay. Okay. I hope if I read. But the pay is not there. Yeah, the, the actual rate's not here. It says equivalent step level as a patrol officer. Does that work? Or do you want the dollar amount in there? Yeah, yeah, if you've got it, I'll make an amended motion. Or I guess I'll rescind my motion. $38.07. Thirty-eight dollars and seven cents. Yes, that's a step twenty-five of the officer's pay scale. That would be the increased, right? Okay. okay. So I will either rescind or amend. I don't know which is preferable. I'll amend my motion and move that Officer Glover be paid an equivalent step level as a patrol officer without on patrol, equivalent to thirty-eight dollars and seven cents, or step twenty-five for patrol hours worked. Is that? Okay, so we have a we have a motion to approve Officer Glover to be paid an equivalent step level as a patrol officer and went out on patrol to thirty eight dollars and seven cents at step twenty five for patrol work. Do I have a second? I'll second that one. I have a second by Chris. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, that would be Unanimous. Number nine, accept the resignation of the Highway Tech three employee. <coughs> Paula. Joey Hall uh, has um, accepted um, an offer in the private sector. So he will be leaving an effective June 11th. And, and he's been here, it will be five years on June 11th. Okay. And we have a letter from Joey. Um, to the town of Morristown, this is a letter of rec recognition to my position, resignation to my position for the town. My last day will be the fifth year vested date from hire, June 11th. Okay. Signed, Joey Hall. Okay. Do I have a motion? I would so move to accept his resignation. Okay, so we have a motion to accept Joey Hall's resignation. I'll second. Second by Laura. Any further discussion? I just want to say that um, I really enjoyed working with Joey. Uh, and I remember his enthusiasm when he walked in here um, and did his orientation with me. So it's, to me, a significant loss. He is a great uh, for him. Oh, thank you for adding that. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Okay. Any other <laughs> discussion? All those in favor of the motion to accept the resigna Joey Hall's resignation, say aye. 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 Who seconded that motion, please? I think Laura. I did. did. I'm sorry. Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. No, that's I didn't catch that. Thank you. That would be unanimous, Judy. Number 10, approve the hiring Highway Tech 2 employee. Paula. So we um, have uh, provided an offer of employment to a Joshua Miller. He is accepted. He will start on May 31st, just giving his notice and then transitioning and vacation. Um, so he's starting on Wednesday, which is just odd. That's why I'm mentioning May 31st. Um, and he's accepted. I think he will be um, an excellent fit. Great. Um, and he will be joining our highway department. And you have a rate here as well. Would you like that as part of the motion? Yes, so we're looking for a motion to approve the hiring of Joshua Miller. <clears throat> Does do Kevin, uh, Highway Superintendent, do you have anything you want to add to this conversation? No, I think you're going to be back for the town for <coughs> Thank you, Kevin. Well, I would uh, make the motion then to approve hiring Joshua Miller as a tech two at 2208 per hour start date of May 31st, 2023. Okay, so we have a motion by Chris. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Travis. Any further discussion? This leaves us with one vacancy we're actively looking to fill. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Okay. We all set? 
So we have a motion to approve the hiring of Joshua Miller as a Tech 2 at 2208 per hour with start date of May 31st, 2023. All those in favor say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. Okay, old business. Discuss adopting the select board rules of procedure. Could I, could I ask a question? You sure can. So we've got people sitting here waiting to talk about the cross board road ordinance. Um, could we switch the, the order here to accommodate uh, road ordinance and we will do the rules of procedure afterwards just so that they don't have to sit here any longer and listen to us pontificate on this? As long as the board is okay with that, we can do that. Isn't it too late when you had to do that right at the beginning with the agenda changes? We, can, we can't add agenda, but we can move items around with the approval of the board. The board must approve this. But that's a great question. Yes. Thank you. I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> but are we all in agreement to I, I would alter that? Yes. As long as we can do that, yeah. Okay. okay, so let's review the class four road policy. Do we need an actual motion to do that or? Let's, sure, let's do that. Well, Judy says no. What do you think? You don't need a motion to change it. No. To change the order? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. And just have the minutes reflect that the board was unanimous in altering the order of the agenda. Thank you. So the class four road policy that we have in our packet. So after our last meeting when we discussed this, I went through and again made the edits. As you can see, the uh, anything in red lettering uh, with a line through it is being deleted from the policy. And the anything in the blue lettering is additional language being added into it. So uh, the highways are not maintained by the town of Morristown. That would be the sentence. The rest of that being deleted is to be passable on a year-round basis. The town maintains bridges and culverts adequate for use by a standard passenger car and may perform maintenance at its discretion to allow passage during non-winter months. That was deleted because it's not supported by state statute. I spoke with Jim Barlow, our attorney. I asked him specifically because I'd never heard bridges uh, before. Culverts had been there, but he indicates that neither culverts or bridges are required by municipalities to be covered. We have worked with landowners as far as the culverts go, uh, just because they're, they are still our roads. But uh, that's why I'm deleting that language there. Uh, a little further down, uh, all requests to improve a class four highway will be considered on a case by case basis by the select board with the following language added. During a public meeting of butters to the class four highway shall be given notice of the meeting and the meeting's intent. That is new language. But that, uh, not necessarily mirrors a, a DRB hearing, but it does give fair warning to those along the road that would be impacted as far as uh, budding uh, landowners. Uh, approval for improvement to all or a portion of the class for highway. Um, I, I added the word improvement there because that's what it was discussing to keep the uh, language standardized. In the last sentence, the cost for such improvements will be the responsibility of the person making the request. Moving down, uh, you'll see the snowmobile language has been and uh, ATV language has been uh, removed there because that was not supported by statute. Vermont statute does not allow us to restrict uh, ATVs, registered vehicles, ATVs, and snow machines on class four town highways. So as long as they are registered uh, ATVs by VASA and snow machines by VAST, uh, they are allowed on class four highways. So that language is removed. But at this point, not allowed on other roads in town. If they're going to try, the, the snowmobile club will come to you. If they're going to travel on a class three portion of your highway, there are some instances where they just cross. Very few of they travel the roads, but they would be in touch with you typically annually uh, to, to request permission to travel on certain sections of your class three roads. And ATVs would not be, not be allowed. It depends on where VAST, VASA has a trail system network. Uh, we do not allow in Morristown, we don't allow ATVs on our, our town highways. But uh, class four roads that are VASA trails, they are allowed on. We don't have any. We, we don't have any VASA trails in the town of Morristown. But we aren't allowed to exclude them 
if we were to open the roads up. That obviously is a, is a moot point, but it's it, the language is contradictory to state law. So, so they're, they're not obliged to come and get permission to, to go on to a class four? Well, the ATVs aren't allowed, with the exception of uh, agricultural purposes. Uh, ATVs are not allowed on your roads anywhere in the town, whether class one, two, three, or four. Okay. Um, that, that was, please, let's not go back through that, but uh, just for clarification, <laughs> so yes. I, I just want a clarification. Absolutely. That was a question that yeah. you had brought up. Yeah. You were concerned about ATVs. Did you understand what he just said? Okay, good. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. I mean, that was a resident that. question I got before the meeting, too, was why are we scratching that language because of the, the history around the ATV issue? Right. So we are, we're still not allowing ATVs. Okay. But we can exclude a registered motor vehicle from our roads. But we can exclude them from all our roads. In this event, the ATVs, because Class 4 roads are connectors for them. So Class 4 roads, Ross Hill Road and for just discussion purposes, if it was a class four road all the way through and we allowed ATVs on our class three roads, then we couldn't keep them off the class four road. But since they're not allowed on any road. They're not allowed on any roads, but the language was contradictory to the statute. So I had to scratch language, but ATVs are not allowed on any of our highways. So, okay. And because there's a trail, because it's a trail between the two portion of the portion of the legal trail. Yeah, and no more motorized, motorized vehicles, vehicles aren't allowed on the trail. We'll speak to the legalized trails here right off. We're coming to that section now. There are some special provisions within that. Uh, under legal trails, that first paragraph. Um, so the primary purpose of a legal trail is to provide recreational access and with approval of the select board, occasional access for new language, agricultural and forest management activities. The trail shall be left in as good or better condition as when permission is granted. So the difference between the difference between the trail and a class four road is trails have no more rides vehicles. So if someone was to use a logger, a, a skitter to do logging on a section of trail to access a property. Again, you'd go through this process of abutting landowners, all of that. But when they left that project, when it was concluded, the legal trail would have to be left in the condition as good or better than it was prior. So that means everything seeded, grass is growing. I mean, it's, it's a much um, it's a higher standard than the class four road because you're having to put it back to its, its original condition after a logging operation. So, uh, any questions on that piece? No. <laughs> Under the logging activities, I added logging and agricultural activities and just added the word uh, agri and agricultural. Uh, permission for the use of class four highways legal trails to access properties for logging and ag agricultural activities shall not be unreasonably withheld with the select board. So I added in the agricultural key component, which is what the board had heard from the, uh, the audience and uh, had given acknowledgement to. So, and then I added the sentence at the end that just says final inspection and approval of the reclamation work is a responsibility of the select board or their designee. So if the board doesn't go out and look at it, then you'd either send the highway uh, superintendent or, or some other person. Or the town administrator, whoever. Could, could be. Whoever we designate. Yeah. Correct. I think that was, that's the extent of the changes that I made. Okay, thank you, Eric. Discussion by the board? Um, I had another comment sent to me by a resident who wasn't able to attend tonight um, requesting an addition to the policy preventing um, anyone, including those who do upgrades from placing gates or other impediments such as ropes across to class four road. So I will put that out there as a suggestion that was sent so by the public. So state law will tell you that you cannot put a locked gate across a class four road. Okay. Uh, you can put a pent gate uh, which is defined as a gate that is meant to keep animals enclosed, typically farmers. Uh, Don, right by your house across the uh, Coal, yep. Coal Hill Road, 
There is a short section, a class four road, it goes to Legal Trail beyond that. The Bidwell Brothers farm up there, they had they put their some animals out in that pasture there, but they have a pent gate. It's a and it's a gate that can be opened by anyone, closed behind them and latched again to keep the animals in. But the ropes are acceptable as long as ropes can be taken down and moved out of the way. I know there's one on off Mud City Loop. Brian Pond. Not Brian Pond. No. Rooney Road. Rooney Road. I was looking at Selena. I knew it had something to do with your name. Sorry. So yeah, on Rooney Road, there is the, the Class 4 Road. Local landowner right there has put a rope across, and it's really a public service because GPSs take cars up in there. There's actually yes. a Massachusetts yeah. license plate and a piece of a bumper uh, right by the rope to indicate your GPS is wrong. Don't go any further. Um, so yes. there, they are legal to put those across the roads as long as they can be removed. For access for pedestrians or bicyclists. And that's outlined in the state law. It is. Okay. Yep. They're called pent gates. Okay. All right. Yeah, right. Okay. So I would entertain a motion then to accept. Well, it's coming. One sec. To. Uh, it does say review class four road policy. Mm -hmm. Can we make a motion to accept it as is? You can with the, with the edits that are that are there. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to take any public comment before we do the motion? I was going to say we can put the motion on the floor and then allow and then public comment. discussion. So we know what we're. Yeah. If if you would like. If sure. somebody wants to make a motion. I would move to accept a proposed uh, new um, Town of Morristown Class 4 Road and legal trail policy. Do I have a second? I'll second. So we have a motion by Chris and a second by Travis. Discussion. I think we had the gentleman in the Go ahead. Do you want to come up to the microphone, David? Introduce yourself. <clears throat> David Ray. I have a real problem with this entire draft, both class four, section one and two, in that there is a tremendous number of people now who are not able to use regular bicycles, be it road bikes, mountain bikes, and we're all buying electric bikes, e-bikes. There's no definition anywhere in here of an e-bike. Now an e-bike, Hmm. is a motorized bicycle. Unfortunately, it's electric. So it's not a registered vehicle. So it doesn't fall into class one classification. It says only registered motor vehicles are allowed. Okay, so that throws that bike out the window legally. Number two, it says legal trails are to be used for non-motorized recreation only. That throws e-bikes out the window. So, if I want to ride my e-bike, the Class 4 Town Road, I'm breaking the law. Or a legal trail. So I think you really need to look at this in the respect that there's a lot of people out there who are riding those bikes because they're really slick. Yeah. Um, I found something interesting. Go ahead. Um, one, uh, 1136A, electric bikes. An electric bike may be ridden in places where bicycles are allowed, including highways, bicycle lanes, and uh, bicycle or multiple paths. So it looks like the state has already addressed that for us. Well, then I think the town needs to also accept that. Well, we do accept it if it's if it's a state statute. Bicycles aren't required to be registered, so right. it would fall under the, the definition of the bicycle, and they're allowed to go wherever bicycles are allowed to go. Yeah. So okay. that's an attempt by statute to define bikes yeah, so it's a great question you're raising David I it's got to agree I, it's, yeah. it's a I would excellent I question yeah, yeah, it's, 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 as somebody who sees e-bikes yeah. going by all the time oh, they are they are it's a ticket these days do you can you offer a definition for one <laughs> uh, Don I would have to say that they are allowed on class four roads it's the legal trails portion that we'd be discussing right. here it's not right. the class four roads they're they're fine to be on those if it's a legal trails issue I can refine this a little bit and, and uh, take a look at statute 
as far as it's yeah. there, but it, the definition that the, the Laura's reading there is is uh, letting us know they're yeah. not considered a motorized vehicle. Yeah. So no, they aren't they aren't required to, they're, they're not required to be registered. Right. Bicycles. So yeah, bicycle is allowed on a trail. Sure is. So according based on this statute. Can you read that one more time, Laura? Yeah. It says an electric, um, uh, and this is just part A, an electric bicycle may be ridden in places where bicycles are allowed, including highways, uh, lanes, bicycles, or multi-use paths. Um, there's but it doesn't say legal trails, and legal trails has its own definition by law. The rail trail is a legal trail. Right. And E-bikes are all over them, and I've spoken to Jackie Cena, Casino about this very issue because we had complaints on our rail trail of people on electric bikes because they, they clip right along hmm. uh, and wanting to know if they could regulate speeds on e-bikes. And Jackie says there's no statute to regulate those. There's nothing they can do about that at this point in time, but they have heard this from other areas of the state, so they're monitoring it for possible regulation down the road. But. All you'd have to do is add the two or a couple words with the exception of electric bikes in here. The non-motorized recreation. The only difference between a bike and electric bike is the fact it's got an electric motor. It's pretty simple to add that. Cover yourself. I don't see the need to add electric bike. They're not considered a motorized vehicle. I, if they're a bicycle. They're allowed to go wherever bicycles are allowed to go. Yeah, so right. we're adding language that doesn't. Yeah. With it. I just want it in the record that we talked about. It. Okay. I, I think that was a great point. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good question. Good yeah. Can you think yeah. of anything else that fits into that category? Uh, no, that right now. No, was, yeah, the e-bikes are a whole new area and territory. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Google. <laughs> I, for one, have no intent of regulating e-bikes on those trails. So, you know, for I what agree. that's worth. There are great ways to get around and go shopping. Oh, I, I agree. My wife owns one, so I, I'm not going there. But I, yeah, <laughs> that's not our intent. The gentleman in the door wanted to speak, I believe. Okay. You come out to the microphone, please. <clears throat> Philip Spell. I wasn't going to talk about e bikes, but uh, I do have an e bike. But you should be forewarned that there's basically come motorcycles that are electric and they're not registered motor vehicles. So out west is about a wattage limit. Uh -huh. And people that want a horsepower because they're running about how many people have these basically electric motorcycles that are on the trails and paths of terror. Thank you for that. Are you familiar with any in town? Um, I know people that have them, the motorcycles you're talking about, basically. They're in Burlington and they've actually been up in Mud City. I've seen them up there. So it's coming. What, do you know what there's, how fast I can go? Well, they go 40 miles an hour. Are they registered? No. No, because they're, they're electric. They'll kind of catch up with all that. Out area. west, they're ahead of it because it's already become a problem. Yeah. yeah. People going way back country where horses can go, so they're limited to the equivalent of a horsepower and converted it to watts or something like that. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Um, but the only other thing I was on the ATV discussion, the way I understood it was if it's an unmaintained Class 4 road and the ATV is registered, you can't keep them off. In the town of Morristown, we don't allow ATVs on any of our highways. So that that includes all classes of roads. Because it specifically says in the state statute, though, because it's access for property. Like, a case in point, mm -hmm. I don't want to plow my road, but I do want to access it in the winter. And it's a much less intrusive way for me to access my property with a registered ATV that tracks on it on the road versus, okay, now i got to plow the thing. Okay. You know, and I'm just like I work Good on point. a lot, but I'm not gonna log in the winter because a lot of people want to use that, so I'm not gonna log it. This is, you know, yeah, that's all. Do you have the statute for reference? It's in the ATV handbook. If you look in, if you look up the ATV from okay. the ATV handbook, it talks about snowmobiles and ATVs, but only if it's an unmaintained, like unplowed glass floor. Okay. Okay. Um, and that was it. And the only other thing I want to say was. 
there's been a lot of turnover on the board while we've been handling this. And I think this is a very good like, place to land from where we started. Thank you. And there's a lot of turnover and confusion, but good job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I agree. I will. The nice part about a policy, folks, is you adopt the policy tonight, two weeks from now. I'll Thank research you. the statute that he's speaking of, and I understand exactly what he's talking about. Um, so if there needs to be a change, we it's a policy it. change that can happen in one meeting. So, yeah. okay. Okay. I seem to remember that we have, yes, go ahead. If you could introduce Hi. yourself. I'm Alex here. Um, just as a couple points of curiosity, will the select board subsequently be um, adopting or revising policies on class one, two, or three highways? And is there any sort of like convenient map of like which highways in town or which classification? I would think Todd would have access to a map that would delineate our class one, two, three, four roads. So the only class two highways we have, I don't know if I have a map available that, that has them spelled out by classification. Kevin, if, I'm, if you've seen one that I haven't, but I haven't seen one. I know the Stagecoach Road and Randolph Road are class two uh, highways. Um, the, the state does the painting on those. They give us money every five years for resurfacing or, or maintenance of the blacktop. Uh, class one highways are maintained by the state of Vermont, not by us. Class three roads can be paved or gravel. Uh, our village streets technically are, are class three roads, Union Street, any of the ones in the village, those are paved. And then our outlying dirt roads are class three as well. Um, class four designators, I do have a map. Uh, Sarah, I would say Vanna, but that, I'm not meaning, <laughs> she's doing the whole Vanna thing back there, but uh, there's a map on the wall back there uh, with some uh, indicators. Um, there is, yeah, there is dotted lines, there's different graphics on the map up there that, that indicate what the classification of the road is. Okay. So, yeah, there is a map right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Is that good? It's, it's reasonably accurate. I can get, uh, I'm supposed to get an updated maps from LCPC here. I was supposed to do that in February, but we got a little sidetracked. So. There's a, uh, I don't know if you've ever, ever looked at the, highway mileage certificates on the VTrans website as well. It's not a map, but it outlines you know, how many miles of each class of road we have. Um, so that could be helpful too, shows what roads have changed. And um, so there's some cool info in there. Any more class threes okay. than anything? Significantly more class threes than anything, yeah. yeah. Okay, we have a motion before us to accept the class four, the town of Morristown class four roads and legal trails policy. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous, Judy. So we're going to go back and discuss now adopting the Select Board Rules of Procedure draft. And this we did discuss at the last meeting, or I believe two meetings ago. And what we're looking at here is the revised, the revision of what we discussed last time, Eric? Yep. The answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I look at the person who did the edits. <laughs> I, I did go through and verify that all of my proposed changes were in there, and they are. Okay, great. Okay. Great. I looked for some of mine as well, Travis. So. <clears throat> Any questions on the part of the board? No. <coughs> I would entertain a motion then. I will make a motion that we approve the uh, rules of procedure as presented. Great, thank you, Laura. I have a, a motion by Laura. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Travis. Discussion? Okay. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of adopting the rules of procedure of the Morristown, for the Morristown Select Board as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Okay. Um, Approve the warrants. I need a motion. Yeah. 
Uh, Alex, you were going to if you just detain the board for a moment. What are the warrants? <laughs> that is a really good question. That's a good question. When I got on the board, I was thinking, what are these warrants? Like, the police department is sending all their warrants to us? And I was totally <laughs> clueless. These are basically the <sighs> Tina Sweet, correct me where I go wrong. <laughs> I incorrectly said Tina's name at the last meeting. And I felt awful afterwards. But um, th these are the bills that need to be paid, correct? That we are that we're authorizing. Basically checks we're cutting, is that an accurate statement? Any checks that are cut, yeah. yeah. It is an outstanding question. I would say the vast majority of people don't know what the <coughs> warrants are. So I need a motion, did I get one? I don't think you did. I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. Thank you, Travis. I have a motion to approve the warrants. Do I have a second? <coughs> second by Laura. Do we have any discussion? No. Okay, all those in favor of approving the warrant, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. TA report. Uh, last week I met with a team from the Regional uh, Red Cross uh, office. Their uh, local director actually lives here in Morrisville, which is very convenient. Uh, it had been since 1991 that they had memorandums of understanding or agreement with any of our shelters. So uh, being a little overdue, it was great to, to go out with them. We uh, toured the National Guard Armory, the uh, Lamont Civic Center, the American Legion Hall, and the high school. Uh, we also had the elementary school on the list, but once we got done with those locations, they were satisfied that we could meet any of the, the community's needs during an event uh, and meet their needs and requirements uh, as dictated by their policies in the ADA. So they are now in the process of sending me documents. There are uh, letters of understanding and agreement uh, for the for the property owners and whether you knew it or not the American Legion Hall is owned by the town of Morristown um, it's a, a one dollar lease basically the agreement with the Legion as long as it remains Legion Hall uh, and they, they take care of it but we do have responsibilities to the building itself so um, Garfield Road has had the final top coat of blacktop applied to it that project is now complete um, I believe Kevin and you and the guys going to put some edging on that in the areas. We've got that... edging and striking lots there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the turnaround at the end of Mac Miller Road. This has been a two-year project, and actually, it, it started long before that. But uh, we ended up, um, in order to, to put this to rest, uh, we hired uh, Becky Gilson, uh, Gilson Land Surveying to go up and properly locate the end of the town highway and the center of the turnaround circle deeded to us after Mitzi did much research on the deeds up there and uh, the pin has been placed. The residents are happy to know that this has uh, been put to rest. Um, we, the highway department went out last week and added gravel, defined the circle using a, a, a radius point from the center um, out to a rock uh, that is put in place to protect uh, water valves on the other side of it. They use that rock as their distance and they created the circle, filled it with gravel, and we have edged it with topsoil and seeded it to make it look nice for the neighbors there. But that is finally put to rest. Uh, this has been an ongoing complaint and issue from residents up there for a number of years. So my thanks to Becky Gilson, who happens to be in attendance tonight, uh, for giving the time to get that survey completed, and to the highway department for the nice job. I took a look at it. They've done a nice job up there. The circle uh, is an improvement in that it expanded what we had up there and will allow us to plow our snow and leave it on our circle rather than pushing it off onto the neighbor's lawns. It's still within our right-of-way. The right-of-way is 55 feet from the center of the circle out. I believe our circle is only about a 43 to 45 foot footprint. Um, we, there was no need for us to do the full 55. It would have been ridiculous to turn it semi up there. But um, So anyhow, that, that is in place. It looks great. I'm very pleased to have that done. Uh, and hopefully no one else will have to deal with that again in the future. Uh, Bill has left us for an emergency call. 
Uh, so I will take his thunder a little bit and let you know that next week is National EMS Week. Uh, so if you have an opportunity to see the ambulance out, our folks out and about, uh, please give them your regards. They do a fantastic job in all hours of the day and night. And that's all I have. Thank you. Oh, but I would be remiss in not inviting Sarah up to do a public service announcement. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this. I knew she had to remind me. Be my suggestion yes. goes to the select board for comments. Okay, Travis, you start. You sure. I'll be short and sweet. Um, just wanted to thank the, the clerk's office, Sarah, um, the BCA. Tax season's crazy. Elections are crazy. Tax seasons coupled with elections are really crazy. So thank you to all of you. I'm sure it's been really, really long weeks. That's it. <laughs> Here he comes now. We went ahead with I that. I apologize, folks, but that just had to happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Okay. Select board comments. Travis. Oh, I already started. You missed my spiel. I'm sorry. Are you done? <laughs> I'm done. Okay, Laura. Oh, I just want to say um, with uh, to everyone with, um, you know, we have a new board. We have new things, crazy schedules and timelines. And just ask for some patience and that um, I think last week there was a little confusion as to we had staff members trying to meet agendas and trying to meet things and it might have added some confusion as to the agenda came out before um, uh, with the notice that we delayed the um, <clears throat> application so it was a little confusing absolutely nobody's fault um, you know uh, <clears throat> That's something, uh, again, these, you know, we're trying to deal with so many different things. So um, I just want to say, if everybody can have a little patience, um, hopefully when we meet uh, <clears throat> on this and get the whole process going uh, and we can coordinate with everybody so that we won't have that kind of um, confusion again. So, uh, you know, uh, again, no one was really at fault there at all. Uh, it was just bad timing, meeting deadlines. Um, so just ask for a little patience as we are trying to navigate this whole uh, process. Thank you, Laura. Chris? Um, I guess the only thing that I would add is, is that um, since our last uh, meeting, um, there's been a fair amount of engagement uh, with people feeling um, good about reaching out to me about different issues and I appreciate that. Um, you know, we've agreed on a lot of things and, and uh, agreed to disagree on a few things, but um, you know, knowledge is power moving forward and um, it's been a good journey this last, uh, last month for me in particular, but particularly this last week in terms of the public engagement and, and uh, talking about all things budget and other. So I appreciate that very much. Great, thank you. Did you talk about the coffee chat? I didn't. I should have. I'll let you take the. Uh, so, uh, Travis and I hosted a coffee chat at uh, Black Cap Coffee this past Saturday and the Saturday before. And uh, the Saturday before, it was we, we did have a significant turnout of individuals, and it was um, it was all in regards to the budget. And it was a very nice conversation. People came in with certainly budget concerns, and I want to say I walked away from that conversation. I thought that was perhaps the most positive conversation I've had around the budget since this budget process. Well, 
since about the 20th of January, I would say. <laughs> so um, it was just just really nice to to have that opportunity to, to get to know people, uh, to get to talk to people. And there was a gentleman sitting in that chair over there by the door. I believe his first name is Scott. He lives on Brooklyn Street. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I just, I was really hoping he'd stick around. I watched him leave here about 10 minutes ago. But when you go up Brooklyn Street, there is one gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous front lawn just filled with tulips. I went by there earlier or later last week, and I tooted my horn and waved. I'm not sure he knew who was tooting and waving at him. But um, I, I saw him tonight, and I really wanted to just say thank you so much. I mean, he's just put... He's out there every single day watering those tulips, and they, that, those gardens are just beautiful. So mm -hmm. that would be my, my comment for tonight. Thanks, I stopped and um, thanked him today as I drove by. Great. They're beautiful. Great. Community comments. Yeah. Can I just make a yeah. and then, Go ahead, Anna. Um, I just wanted to clarify something with the counselor job descriptions. Yeah. There is language in there that says that there's a recommendation that they be 16. I just want to clarify that all the counselors are not 16 year olds. We have um, many who are college graduates, who are working um, for college degrees and who are really pursuing this as a field of employment. Right. Um, and we had two counselors this weekend who graduated, um, one with a bachelor's degree in education, and she's gonna be an elementary school teacher at Hyde Park next year. Um, and then another who graduated with an associate's degree from Linden. And I'm not exactly sure what his degree is in, but I just wanted to say that we have really an amazing group of counselors um, and they're not just 16 year olds. So, yeah. Thank, you. Thank, thank you for that. And it's worth noting that the language does say minimum requirements. Yes. Yeah. Community comments. Yes. Tom Cleary and Marshall. First of all, I want to thank the board for getting out to the public, for doing these talks, for getting on front page for to put up the information as you see it about this, especially about this budget right now, because it is, it is it, I thought, subject right now is, it's, it, it's not open, and hopefully it will be soon. That is important. It's the first time I've seen my board going out and talk to the people, and I hope we continue doing that even after this. We've talked about this, it. This, yes, because it's a great idea. Yep. Well, we must return to the conversation we had beginning off. I did send a, I, a email to you folks. And uh, I did not make it public first. You did. So that, I, that wasn't my intention to make it public. This is my, what got this all going, this monument, my letter to the, to, to the department head and to you. This is my letter. In the event that the town doesn't have a town administrator before Eric leaves, what do you see as possible con consequences for your department? If any, if the position was left vacant for say a month, I'm not sure how you would respond to me directly, maybe through the select board chairman. This is your letter to me. The following email you sent to the employees of the town is quite inappropriate. There's where we have our problem. I've been following in interest in this town for about five years. I love this town. I, I, I'm confident in the end that we will see great progress for Morrisville. We'll get over the budget thing. We'll get over. Eric My concern is, was, was at first it seemed like we weren't doing anything about anything. And you're right, it was confusing. I didn't see anybody uh, blaming anybody for her. There was just confusion. I did not see anything wrong with my letter. I got a couple returns. 
I had been heard from the select board what the answer was to that simple question. I think I responded to you, didn't I, Tom, in terms of the uh, process? I said I got a couple of responses. Okay, I just for clarity's sake. Yeah, well, I just said I got a couple of uh, okay. None from the department heads. Well, that's not true either, but I'm not going to tell you who I got it from. My suspicion would have been it's not going to interfere with us at all. We have fantastic department heads, super department They don't need a TA standing open. That was what I suspected. And then I got, because I'm a very concerned citizen, I got the inappropriate comment. And, the, and the, my email back to you, I sub-teach in elementary school. I've heard worse in that elementary school than what I said to you folks. So I'm sorry you took offense to me. But I'm not sorry that I asked that question. I'm sorry I didn't get the answers. And I'm going to continue to ask questions to you, to all the departments here, and to anybody that I think has influence in this town that I love. So, I think I so I'm sorry. Don't interrupt. No, I'm, I thought you were done. I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought you were done. I'm sorry. To have you bring that out in public, what I thought was a private email to you people, was a mistake. We'll get over it. You're a great board, and we're looking forward to it. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Tom. Any other comments? Go ahead. <coughs> Paul Green, Northfield. Um, I'd just like to note from my perspective that Mr. Palermo's reading of the email did not mention the author of the email. That's correct. correct. Did not. Um, so <coughs> the mentioning of another person that the said author, whoever that may be, um, was <coughs> it's not necessarily warranted as retaliation from my, pers my perspective. Thank you. Other community comments? Yes, go ahead. I'm really glad that the notice was put out on the front porch forum that we would have to specifically ask to get um, our um, school ballots mailed to us if we wanted to vote absentee because I would not have thought to ask. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. <coughs> I, um, I haven't uh, introduced Dan, yourself. Thank you. Um, I haven't um, got a chance to look at the new um, class four um, ordinance, um, but I'm curious, and I've uh, gone often to the end of the class three road and generally park to one edge or the other um, to go for a hike or a walk. Um, and a lot of people in the town do that, and they really like the ability to do that. Uh, but I was wondering again around, uh, and I'm not sure the road you spoke about. Uh, where they did do a turnaround. Um, I don't. I think it's a good idea, and I don't know if it would be on that policy or on the regular road policy, that the town would get a right-of-way um, at some point, either at the very end of the Class 3 road or slip it up to the next agreeable landowner that would allow the town either a hammerhead or a um, cul-de-sac um, easily. Um, either, I, I, I don't suggest that we purchase one, I'm suggesting we ask somebody to give it to us so that a general public driving up the class three road could leave their car on the side and it would be covered mostly by the town. Also, it would give uh, room to turn the town equipment as well as any lost bus or set semi to turn around. Um, and also, even the cruisers and stuff like that, it'd be a Area to turn around without turning around in a private dooryard uh, driveway. Um, so I think it's something that can be added um, as we go forward. I don't think we need to go catch up with all the ones that are there, but uh, before they become an issue of somebody parking on somebody's private property, stuff like that. I'd, I'd like to see something like that happen. If we go that that Thank is you, Dan. actually in place, Dan. Uh, in our in our policy that governs the taking over. 
of a, a road that, that's been built by a developer. Um, there is language in our policy that says that the end of the road will either be a, uh, a, a cul-de-sac or a hammerhead turnaround. That has to be in the easements. We have to have easements for all the property on both sides of it. So yeah, yeah no, that's in our policy. I, mean, yep. uh, um, I, I was wondering again where a subdivision uh, go, a new subdivision would be that way. Um, is there some way through the town or through time a, a, a list of the ones that I've developed that way, especially the old palm roads that go from <coughs> class three to class four, that there could, can't be something created there. I think we'd have a hard time. Well, I made the round of requests. These are a specific road you're talking about? Because I'm, I'm through my head, I'm just running through back roads. Our, yeah. our dump trucks have to plow out, uh, pick up wheels and small ones. Most people are very happy when you turn your plow trucks around yeah. in their yard. Yeah. But, I, but I do think that at some place in the future, there would be, some, especially around uh, either more tourists or more people uh, and the same accumulation of more people actually finding a, a wonderful place to go and then it gets real crowded without any mm -hmm. accessible parking that wouldn't annoy somebody. It, it, again, to be preemptive is probably a good idea. Okay. okay. So, Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Any other comments? Okay, we're coming to the end. Other business? Do we have any, do we have an executive session motion? Um, we do, it's in the packet, I believe. <coughs> you can't make it. You don't really make them. I'm happy to make it if you okay. like. Go ahead, Travis. I move to go into executive session because I find that the premature general public knowledge of pending or probable civil litigation or prosecution to which the public body is or may be party will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. Do we have a second for that and, motion? And if we could add uh, inviting Becky Gilson and myself into that executive session, please. Got that in the second part. Second part. Thank you. So I need a second for this first motion. I'll second. We got a second by Laura. Any discussion? Chris? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. <laughs> I will move to go into executive session to discuss the pending or probable litigation or prosecution under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont statutes to include town administrator Eric Dodge and licensed land surveyor Rebecca Gilson. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? I will second. I have a second by Laura, a motion by Travis. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Aye, that would be unanimous. We just need to close that door. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm.